So we just learned that when energy is conserved, we know energy at one location equals energy at a second location. When energy is not conserved, we have energy at one plus work done conservative equals energy at that second location. Now, what types of energy is there? Well, the first type is kinetic energy, energy of motion. If the object has a velocity, it has a kinetic energy, and we know that by the equation, kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. Next, does it have a potential energy? This is energy of a position. Um, this is, does it have a relative height? Right. So what do I mean by that? Well, I can have two people uh, standing at the top of a cliff, right? and I could say, well, this is height equals zero, so neither of those have potential energy. However, if I compared them relative to someone on the ground now, these two gentlemen do have a height and they do have a potential energy. So that is a relative, so if they have a relative height in comparison to something else. The last one we need to talk about is spring potential energy. Pretty easy way to tell if you have a spring. Now, the spring actually has to be compressed or extended. Um, looking into this, well, first you need to know um, a force because we remember the only way we get energy is by doing work. So this is force parallel times distance. Well, the force of a spring equals kx. I believe we talked about it, but maybe never wrote it down. k is the spring constant. And this is how strong a spring is. The units are in newtons per meter. So this tells me how many newtons it takes to compress it a meter. Uh, x is the um, distance um, compressed or extended from equilibrium. Uh, in this scenario, for a horizontal spring, uh, equilibrium is when there is zero net force. So over here, uh, the spring isn't doing anything, so the net force is zero, so there's no force. Here I can see the spring is compressed, so I have a net force. So I would take this distance, measure the new distance, subtract the two, and that would give me my x in the problem. Now, how can we figure out the work done on this spring when we release it? Because the problem we have here is here, if I measured it compressed, I would say, well, here the force of the spring equals kx. And over here at the very end, once you've released it, the force of the spring is zero. So we had a varying force. So what I would have to do here is I would have to say, well, the work done by the spring equals the force average of the spring times the distance it's moved. So if I started at kx and I ended at zero, my average would be kx over two. Then multiply by the distance. Well, the distance that the spring acted over is the exact same amount that it was compressed, so that is x. So if I looked at this equation, I would end up with work done by the spring equals one half kx squared. Okay? If we were doing it in terms of potential energy, we could see the spring has stored energy. How did the spring get that energy? Well, it got that by the work done. So spring potential energy is the same as the work you would have to do uh, to compress it. So this is then one half kx squared. You have to use that in one of your homework problems. So if you have a spring, that is your spring potential energy, and that is your equation. Good luck working on your homework problems.